Hey guys, welcome back to the stream. Um, we're going to be continuing on with this piece uh, today. Just in Photoshop now, we're just going to basically be painting through this for the next couple of sessions and getting it finished. Um, I did actually... Um, sorry, apparently the audio is sounding a bit weird. Um, if it is sounding a bit weird, let us know. Um, but yeah, we, uh, I did actually jump ahead a little bit on this one. Nothing too crazy. Um, but I'll basically just, I'll run through kind of what I've done to it first, um, before we get into painting. So it's all kind of just starting some stuff out, but I basically just wanted to make sure that what I wanted to do with this was going to work properly on the stream because... We don't have huge amounts of time to to fix stuff if it goes really sideways um so there's just a little bit of kind of lay in of some textures and just whoops and trying to get a little bit of the palette sorted out so nothing too crazy but a few little bits of texture here and there um and then obviously i've split this up into layers as well so um just going through and chopping stuff out it's nothing you know it's nothing uh hard to do or anything like that it just requires the the time and the patience um and then down the bottom here we've got i've got like if there's a few different versions of this that i actually rendered out um some of these are just low opacity stuff so more fog less fog all that kind of stuff just to have some options um and then up the top here we've also got this kind of uh object id pass which gives us um some nice punchy colors that we can use to just break out selections if we need them um, at any point during the painting so that just sits on top um, so yeah just a little bit of this some of this is photo some of this is paint just trying to it's all pretty small stuff really it's nothing too crazy um, and we'll be doing plenty of the same stuff over the next couple of hours so if you're not really sure of the process and that kind of thing that will all get explained hopefully pretty well um, and then the other thing that I've done here which is what I like to do with any any painting really um, but especially coming out of blender is I tend to just do a little bit of a really garish uh, scribble over the top just kind of reminding myself what I want to do with the image because when you get working into these you know there's a lot of stuff you have to paint into them so I find doing something like this is just a really good way to give myself a little bit of a list of things to check off as we go through um, there's going to be some extra elements coming into here that will affect the composition stuff like that so having little scribbled notes like this um which obviously don't look good but they just remind me uh what i'm trying to achieve and some ideas that i've had to kind of work it through so uh, you might occasionally see me just like turn this layer on and off a little bit just to kind of double check but um the other thing that i've also got just kind of pre-prepped here uh, is a pure ref board over here on my other monitor um this is partially some reference for just vegetation shapes, a um, little bit of lighting reference, and probably also, we, like, I'll definitely be using some of this photographic stuff in the painting, kind of bringing it in and working it into the image. Um, I want to keep the overall look of this image quite painterly, but, you know, when we're doing concept images like this, we use photographic elements um, all the time just to help us lay stuff in. It speeds things up. Um, so... Uh, yeah, you'll see me probably copy and paste some stuff in. Um, I've got a bunch of other, uh, you know, photographic reference plates on a hard drive here as well, but these are just a few that I went through and picked out initially because I thought it'd be good to have these kind of just as a uh, bit in there. So it's kind of me looking at my image and knowing what I want to do with it and then going and finding um, photographic uh, shot, shots and references that are kind of fitting what I need to do. So... Um, yeah, first thing that I want to do in here is actually lay this ground plane in. Um, it's one of the bits of the, the foreground in here that didn't really deal with too much in the 3D, um, mostly because it's would have been very, very heavy to get that vegetation in um, into the 3D scene. And it's, it's much easier and more flexible, I find, to do that kind of stuff after the fact. So um, yeah, we're going to kind of go through and just get that all sorted out. And we'll probably start with a few little photographic details that's a huge image um whoa. cool 
cool. And let me just turn off all this really annoying purple lines that like to show up. So yeah, when we're working with, well, I always find working with Photoshop and stuff like that. Um, one of the biggest challenges is that if you want something to not look particularly digital, you really have to kind of bite the program um, in order to get that look, right? Like Photoshop is, is not naturally going to give you something that looks painterly. It's gonna give you something that looks digital. So a lot of what this is gonna be is, is is fighting that kind of thing um and especially if you're if you're adding photos into it you need to kind of manipulate that and get the look correct i'm also just going to quickly up the top here set my proof setup to um dot gain 20 percent which will give me a really quick access to um grayscale so like kind of uh, previewing uh, which is really handy if you're doing stuff with photos because one of the biggest things you'll have to do with photo plates bringing them in is kind of match the the value range to get it to look correct i'm not really too worried about color um, i'm also about getting the value range correct so having a quick um quick access to something like that is really really good And then we're going to use the smart blur filter to just pull some of the detail out of uh, out of these uh, photographic plates. And yeah, it's a really really handy one. push that stuff in the right direction. Um, and you'll probably see me use a lot of the match color filter as well, um, which is going to allow me to pull color information from everything else in this image and basically paste it into these photographic bits coming in. So um, yeah, and you know, th this initial one here is just something that I'm going to use as a base. It obviously, has rocks and stuff in it already um you know the, these leaves over here we don't really need so we can just paint them out but i'm just going to use this as a base to kind of quickly paste it across fairly large parts of this image just to get a little bit of extra detail in because the ground texture from blender um is not great the one that we the one that i got in there it was a pretty quick one um oops so yeah we'll just get this kind of knocked in first and just use this clown um, pass here just to separate out an area and we can use masks and stuff just to block that in nicely oops So you can see here that like it's not perfect but already we've got a nice little base here that we can start to paint up on and you know kept i kept the values pretty similar to what was already in there and Yeah, it gives us a really a really good base layer to start working on top of. So yeah, if you've got any questions about any of the process stuff that I'm doing as I as I go through here, just feel free to jump into the into the chat and just and just leave the, the questions there, and I'll, I'll answer them as I see them.
turn um, snap off. Get those things move around. I don't want them to snap to other things. And yeah, we'll just kind of push through and get um, some of this. Terrain kind of pasted in, like I said, just using some of these pre-prepped. Oh, that's not actually the one I wanted. Some of these pre-prepped little photo bases here just to get that detail in quickly. Uh, that clown layer is, is a really invaluable invaluable one because it just does very quickly allow you to get selections pulled out here but again I'm really just looking more for texture and a little bit of um, interest I guess in the surfacing Just using masks here to get this kind of looking all right.
basically every time I add something new, I just tend to put it onto a, a new layer and then if I don't like it, I can, it's easy to remove. If I do like it, it's easy to flatten down later. So. And unless your PC is really gonna struggle new layers in Photoshop can, oops, can handle that stuff pretty pretty easily so it's not usually something you have to really worry about too much. and stuff like this, I tend to use a lot of kind of copy and pasting of these bits. Um, because it, it's something that no one's really going to ever, like, you know, no one's going to ever be able to tell that you've just copy pasted stuff around and it's not something that you really want to spend hours and hours um, painting and painting and painting. It's not worth it, so... Hey, Casey Bros. It's um, yeah, it's 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 basically invaluable using an object ID pass. Um, this is not to be clear. Just in case, I think I I'm pretty sure I showed this how to do this in the end of last week's stream. Um, so or maybe the one before that. But either way, if you go back, you can if you search for clown pass in Blender or um, probably even like a workbench color pass or something like that in blender because that's what it's actually called um, this is not a true object id pass you can do them in blender but you have to go through the compositor and it's it's a whole it's a whole thing um, this is a really quick easy way of doing it but you basically just go through and do a workbench render with all of your colors set to be flat and to be assigned randomly to each object so that blender will basically just give each object its own color um, they do sometimes overlap sometimes you'll get two objects next to each other with the same color which means you lose that ability but um yeah for doing a painting like this it means that you can use masks to separate things this is what i use to separate out my base layers as well to make duplicates so i've got like a nice layering system all the way down so i can just work from foreground to background um yeah so it, it without that i i wouldn't i don't know what i would do i'd probably not not do anything because you would have to spend so much time cutting stuff out it would be a major pain in the ass So I want to add some kind of uh, leaves and undergrowth in the, the foreground of this shot. So I'm just going to rough them in with the selection tool. Really, just really quickly at the moment.
here and just kind of paint um, a little bit more. Paint out that reflection because that reflection is one of my scene lights in Blender, which we don't want to show up, obviously. And just paint a little bit more interest into the into the water texture. Obviously, water texture is not a texture anymore, but um, obviously what we have here in the water is just technically correct for the the blender scene. Like, there's, there's nothing wrong with it, but we can just tweak it kind of coming through here. This uh, particular image doesn't have, uh, the photo I should say, doesn't have a particularly strong sense of lighting direction in it, which is often a nice thing when you're using this as a base, because if there's one thing that's really easy to pick, it's when um, an image that you've composited into a, a painting has a lighting direction that's different to what uh, is actually in the scene. Um, so that's something to just be really aware of if you are gonna be doing um, photo kind of work in, in Photoshop is, is to understand that. So it, it, yeah, you see, I've seen it. Seen it in images before where whoever's done the painting hasn't hasn't considered that and it all, it all will look just a little bit wrong.
a little bit of that build up of vegetation onto the robot here. Also trying to stay fairly fairly zoomed out this stage as well just to get all of these shapes blocked and looking all right. So even though we're starting to add detail, we're still very much at the stage here where we need to just be really careful of where we're putting big shapes and, and all that kind of stuff. So we get caught in the nitty gritty details at the moment. Not necessarily in trouble, but we'll be probably wasting wasting time on stuff that we can sort out later. So I'm basically just going around to each major object here and just making sure that I've got my values all right. Um, and then move once and once I'm happy with it, I can move on to the next. in the foliage for these trees. This value is not really 100% correct, I don't think, but I'm more so looking at the shape at the moment, so not too bothered by it. We can work. Work all the, the correct tones and colors and stuff over the top afterwards.
inspiration behind this project? Good question. Um, well, so I mean, part of this came out of the the fact that I already had this robot head built for a class um, when I was teaching, and I kind of liked it as an asset, and I was like, okay, that works. Um, that works quite nicely. So that definitely came from it, and then really it was just kind of it's a pretty it's a pretty basic concept, but I'm always a big fan of kind of like that juxtaposition of, of something like this this robot head being plonked somewhere where it doesn't necessarily seem like it belongs um, and then from there like really what I'm looking for is just trying to create a certain type of mood really um, and I you know like with, with this type of, of concept piece like that's really what it's about is about selling a selling a particular mood um so i think like that that's really what i concentrate on with something like this more so than anything else it's how, I, how i want it to feel um because if you're doing this for a, a show or a, a game or anything like that like that's gonna be that's gonna be the the major concern for this type of this type of keyframe um, concept is that you're you're trying to show off a particular mood or a particular emotion so
with a piece like this as well, I'm really conscious of the silhouettes that I'm creating as well. So just making, like, it's kind of what I'm doing at the moment is just, I want to break up the, the top of this robot head a bit. Um, but I want to make sure that that silhouette that comes through at the end is nice and organic and, and believable. So just finding kind of the right color balance here as well. Because this, this uh, shot has a lot of kind of oranges, like it's not a, it's a forest scene, but it's not a straight kind of green forest. Um, we are getting a lot of kind of grays, lots of kind of yellow grays and red grays in here. It can be a little finicky to balance. I always find them a little bit more challenging than a kind of greens and blues. Not sure why, but. robot head and, and trying to build up um, some other areas of moss and, and growth and stuff like that because obviously the material that we used in blender was kind of procedural so it's only going to put stuff in certain spots where it where the, where the algorithm makes sense um, that may not necessarily be where we want these things to be artistically so we have to go through and tweak things so like having some bits of moss and stuff kind of like hanging off him almost like a little bit of a beard or something at the bottom could be kind of cool so and that's another area where we're, we're now creating a little bit of a a silhouette as well so we have to be conscious of what that silhouette's doing and stuff kind of building up in the, the crevices here. Okay. It's like rust or something dripping down. Yeah, really just wanting to go around and get in all the little bits of detail that we need, really. Just... of grass or something in here that I can oops it's all on the same layer Just kind of punch through on a few spots here again mostly as a, as a silhouette we can work 
back over this stuff just to get the right tones and colors and stuff like that. Gonna get a bit of a, a rock here on the the bank of the river. Be sitting. There's layers in the right order. Just, yeah, lots of lots of balancing, lots of pushing, lots of pulling, just getting everything to sit right. had this this photo plate that was actually part of the render um, which I'm just going to knock back and then probably put some other stuff in front of it so that that real kind of photoiness doesn't over like kind of come over the top of everything and hurt it like big boulders or something in here would make sense given that we've already got
open up one of these uh, in a new image here and we'll just see if we can pull out a little bit of shape stuff from here just by separating the channels out. See if that gets us anything. Oops, useful. Not really. There's a few little tricks in Photoshop that you can use to. Oops. selection going uh, a few little tricks we can use in Photoshop to try and just pull out some of these because these are great shapes the shapes of these leaves are really nice that's something that I can use even if I don't use the actual photographic info in here I can use the the shapes really well with the texture here so this is just using the refine edge in Photoshop which sometimes is effective this is a really not a, a great um, image for it it's never gonna give me a great result but that will give me it's nice interesting bit of info like, like shape information here which we can you know we can just paint over this we don't need to actually take all that photographic detail out of it but these shapes alone will be really useful to kind of build up a little bit of extra extra in areas little bits in here that still look a little bit repetitive so we can just paint them out background here we've got a lot of you know a lot of freedom to just kind of put some interesting foliage like shapes in the back here without having to go through there and work it up too much use a couple of different brushes here that give me slightly different types of edges some that are a little bit sharper some that are a little bit softer Thank you. 
And down on this right hand riverbank here, I've got a couple of areas that I think are not. The, it's a little tricky to kind of track what's happening in terms of the the planes and the whoops, the way that things are facing. So. bit of mist in here, I just need to once I build a little bit of extra um, contrast between that that silhouette to just bring us up to the the head of the robot a little bit more. Don't want to go too heavy handed with it, we don't need to because we've still got quite a nice silhouette there but just want to push that out a little bit more. I quite like the colors and the values that are happening in this layer here, but I don't like the shapes. So I'm just gonna actually get a mask here and actually mask that entire layer off. And then just using a different brush, we can just paint back into that mask and we get a lot of, we get the, the same content 
but with different shapes. some of these highlights and reflections a little bit more in the fingers. side surface of that wrist section there just to kind of show it receding back a little bit more get some nice little neck kind of details in there kind of what I'm gonna turn my attention to this hand a little bit more I think now just to paint out some of the 3D-ness get rid of you know some of these weird intersections in here that we have to deal with either as kind of broken broken parts or anything like that so obviously in the 3D we just kind of jammed them together Thank you. 
use our clown pass here just to get a nice selection of that edge hide that selection while we work into it across the top of those hands there kind of reflecting down from the, the light in the forest behind just replace a bit of that Also just softening a few of the edges in here as well because again they're just like perfectly sharp kind of 3D things. bit of hue adjustment here Sticky wake off again. It's kind of annoying, which means I have to keep dragging this way. I have to keep dragging those sliders kind of out a little bit too much. So, just gonna get a little bit more um, fog kind of just dropping down just in this little gap here. easy kind of spot where we can push a little bit more silhouette contrast in there as well. Really nice. Yeah, so that's a nice little difference there because we can really just pop out the edge of the head there which gives us a nice Nice look at the, the profile. Good.
taking some of these rock shapes um, and just dressing them up a little bit and also we will just affect their silhouette a little bit as well because obviously some of these are looking a little bit too
this ground plan a bit. It's a bit mucky. Not particularly clear. I haven't really come over this side of the painting in a while. We're all trying to clean this, <clears throat> clean this little section off here. It's kind of losing a bit of definition, and because it is one of the bits of this image that's kind of leading us into the main area, I wasn't really happy with how that was sitting. So yeah, just trying to simplify some of these shapes. We're just getting way too busy. Kind of building it up from the ground again, but that's all right. We just have to look at how these things are sitting as you go through an image and just fixing them up where they need to be fixed up, really.
180. Uh, again, this is just another getting some more um, usable shapes out of a uh, bit of photographic reference. And we can just tweak that to our liking.
quickly save that again for just in case. percent of saving drop that down a bit, open up the front of this a bit more, which means we'll have to go back in and re-establish this ground plane, but I think it is just going to help us get a bit more travel through the composition.
Oops. Accidentally hit save, so now I have to wait for that to Ugh, sit there and wait through that long save again so we can do anything. Little bit of a blocker there might help. That does make composition a little bit left heavy. We can't Just basically moving this around, seeing what we could potentially do here to. into the middle a little bit more because I quite like the effect that that has on the, the left side pretty well. Could just be as simple as bringing a little foreground element in like that just to frame it a little bit more obviously this tree we would have to sort out but
just before we finish up, I'm actually going to go around and kind of do like another another round of notes on this for like the next the next time I sit down and work on this, which will be next week. Um, so still want to sort out that a little bit more. That edge is giving a little bit of, I'm not really liking how that's sitting. Um, we do need to just, I want to de-3-deify the water because I think that looks a little bit too um, fake at the moment. And probably actually get rid of, get rid of that tree add a couple of smaller ones in the background here just in front uh, yeah I want to get didn't I kind of avoided doing the birds today so it didn't really didn't really feel like I'm sitting on top, I'm not sure. I'm not really a fan of these ones in the eyeball. Yeah, maybe just a few kind of sitting on top like that and then some others. Maybe some over here. Um, oh hi Alan, you are you're coming in right on the right in the uh the end of the uh the stream today actually but um yeah so this this is a lot of 3d in here um but we've spent the last two hours or so painting over it and we will spend another two hours or so next week finishing it off um to take us to a grand total of about eight hours um so something that you know that if you you've got it decently planned out from the beginning is, is about a day's worth of work um, and kind of what I'm I guess what I'm doing here really is, is kind of that that final little pass of notes that um, I would probably do just as I had my afternoon cup of coffee or something like that um, and then just you know being able to sit down for the, the rest of the afternoon just to to finish off any little things that needed to be tweaked and stuff like that so yeah it's uh it's definitely coming along but let's just call that notes v2 this one was notes number one i just follow that so i remember to turn it back on um and yeah just for the i mean we've got a just five minutes or so left to go what i'm actually going to do is just put a little bit of extra paint and maybe a little bit of, a little bit of scratching a little bit of paint and stuff into this also partially but something like this as well it, it becomes a little bit more about just wanting to again paint out some of that uh, texture that is I guess like overly 3d and like this texture up the top for instance is pretty pretty nastily stretched anyway because obviously when I did that initially I didn't Huge amount of effort um, fixing the textures up in Blender.
sometimes, you know, sometimes the painting process after doing a scene in 3D is, is about, you know, actually adding, adding more stuff to the painting and actually, you know, painting in extra things. But part of it also I find is, is also just, you need to just treat, like get the final treatment of the image as well. I guess it's almost like doctoring the image a little bit just to make it, um, all cohesive as well because anything that you add in that's not rendered is obviously not going to look exactly the same as what comes straight out of blender so you need to just just work on making everything cohesive as well which is partially a final step like with i'm jumping ahead a little bit but um, i'm going to redo those birds as well because i don't like them um let's just add that to our little notes on the ground, maybe not. I'll just get a slightly better silhouette read in there of some of that top layer of the foliage as well. That's another thing we can do. Next week, I think that will just help kind of fit that eyeball a little bit better into the landscape. Put a little bit of techy nonsense in there. But yeah, I find like doing a couple, you know, a couple of rounds of this, it's kind of like doing feedback for yourself. Um, if you're working for a client and stuff, you'll get feedback from the client also. So that will help you kind of find the finish in the image as well, but so I guess I'm kind of see, you know, like from this is kind of what you know what we've been working on for the last couple of hours just kind of coming from here which is pretty much pretty much the base render with a couple of little painterly bits in there um, from beforehand and yeah just kind of like working on pushing it to the, the final kind of stage that we want for a kind of a moody little bit of a set concept or a little bit of an environment concept um, but yeah, we're going to leave it there for this week and we'll come back and we'll spend the same amount of time on it again just to get that final finish, I guess. Um, and yeah, then I think that'll that'll be pretty much it for the image. So yeah, hopefully that's been an enjoyable two hours for you guys just watching this image come together um, with all of its ups and downs. And yeah, we will hook back into this next week and uh get it finished so yeah come back then and uh yeah have a good afternoon <laughs>